Hi there, this is Leslie Kristen. Welcome to Studio Cara. And today I am going to do a transition on when you are transitioning to a uh, to getting your hair gray, to letting it go gray, um, or if you're transitioning, you know, to a blonde. There's a whole process that uh, you can go through, and now especially I think a lot of people going through the whole COVID-19 process, you haven't been able to go to your hairstylist. And, um, you know, some people have beautiful gray that's coming in. You might be tired of coloring your hair. You know, there's a whole bunch of different things, but one of the things that is so important is that you understand with the transition what that is gonna entail for you. Also, that it may be a, a transition with your makeup as well. So there's a couple of different things that I did want to talk to you about. And of course, I have my beautiful model, Paula, that she was telling me, she came down from St. Augustine, and she was telling me, you know, I'm letting my hair go natural. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of different processes, and there's a couple of different, you know, there's a couple of different um, situations as well that people might be going through. So with that said, I wanted to, actually, I'm going to talk to you, Paula, okay. and, and let's talk a little bit about kind of your transition. Now with Paula, she is not, um, she doesn't have loads of gray, you know, there's not the, the super white roots with the really dark hair, but share yeah. with me a little bit about kind of what made you decide. Well, um, I have highlights and lowlights, and I've been doing that to cover the gray that I do have, and most of my gray is tucked up underneath, so if I pull my hair back, you can see it a lot more. Um, with the COVID-19 and not being able to go to the beauty salon, um, I've obviously been letting my natural hair grow out because I haven't had a choice, and I've decided that you know maybe I just want to go back to my natural color and see how much gray I actually have and see what that looks like instead of doing the highlights and lowlights. And with the situation being what it is with COVID right now, I'm just not sure I want to spend the money on that. And so, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're doing a little bit of experimenting around that. Mm -hmm. so. That's great. So as you can see, so for example, with Paula, um, I'll just share with you a little bit as a makeup artist, what I look at and how I can help her out. Because Paula has been a client of mine. We've done makeovers on her. Mm -hmm. She will probably not be as dramatic of a switch with your mm -hmm. makeup because Paula is what I call a low contrast. So with her, you know, you can see her eyebrows. We, we shaped her, her eyebrows a little bit, the color of her eyebrows. And then also you can see here, this is her natural color. And, you know, she doesn't have a lot of gray, trust me. That's because she eats so well. <laughs> <laughs> Nutrition is everything, right? Yes. Um, so, you can see here, and it's so funny, my, um, my other client calls them sparkles. She says, I've got sparkles coming through my hair. And so I can definitely see some of the, um, you know, some of the gray coming through, which of course, as that hair grows out, it's going to lighten up her skin tone. And what's gonna happen is that, you know, the gray is also more of a silver color versus the warmth in the highlights that she has. So that's also going to change those undertones that you have in your skin, as well as, you know, um, even some of the clothing colors that you might even wear too. Mm -hmm. So that is a process. Now I want to share with you, uh, Chris Martin is a fantastic hairstylist here in the central Florida area. And I asked him to share with me some tips for those of you that are thinking about transitioning or that are doing that. So he, um, he mentioned, you know, to grow your gray out as long as you can. So if you're somebody, if you can handle it, you know, um, grow it out as long as you can, because that's going to obviously get, and especially if you've been coloring your hair dark, you know, letting that color grow out. Uh, consult with your stylist about a plan to grow it out and find a stylist who can and specializes in this process because not everybody specializes in the process 
of stripping out that color and transitioning you to that other, you know, and, and it's a gradual um, change as well. Uh, don't expect quick results. It's an all day, sometimes more than one day process for dark dyed hair. So that would be something that you want to consider. Now that's not necessarily your case because right. you have a lot of natural color in there. You mm -hmm. just have highlights and lowlights mm -hmm. that are going to be transitioning out. Yeah. So she's a little bit more fortunate. I would say that, you know, there's not that little skunk pattern going on <laughs> or the, you know, that dramatic, um, hair color. And that can also be, you know, it doesn't even necessarily mean, um, uh, gray too you right. could have you know maybe like natural blonde hair and you've been mm -hmm. coloring your hair super dark so right. um and then he also says to consider a shorter cut to make the process mm -hmm. easier and to complement your new gray color uh things to help grow out gray is use color blending spray on your part so if you part your hair Makeup or mascara can blend your gray roots, uh, maybe using headbands, scarves. Uh, also, if you are really committed to growing out, um, he said like a little topper wig can also cover your gray and give you some volume or a full wig for those that don't want to deal with the switch. So, and we were saying like, you know, maybe one day you could be a redhead, one day you yeah. can be a brunette. Have some um, fun with it. You can have some fun with it. Just knowing that every hair color is going to change um, your undertones, mm -hmm. some colors may clash, and then it is a gradual change. So with that said, um, I'm going to work on a little transformation and we will be back. Okay, so welcome back, thank you. Um, here we are with um, our first step of what we've done. And what I started off with is we actually shaped her eyebrows. So that's one of the services that we do the most is eyebrow design. And Paula has two different little eyebrows, <laughs> which mm -hmm. most of us do. And which is a common problem is the uh, eyebrow was a little heavy over in this area right here. And so what we did was I took a little bit of this out because what you want to do is you want to elongate your eyebrow. You want to have that, um, that eyebrow arch further out, closer to the, um, you want to have that closer to the outer edge of your iris. And so with that, um, with that said, we want to kind of open up the eye. With her eye shape, you also have a hooded lid. So her, what that means is that this top part of the of the eye, you can't really see the crease. So you can't really see the depth. So we're gonna have to create that with her eye shape as well. But what I did is our eyebrow pencil, I used a blonde eyebrow pencil, which is a lighter color, and really kind of emphasized more of the um, a transition all the way up to the arch. And what that does is it gives her a prettier arch, um, a fuller, a bit of a fuller brow, and then also extending out that eyebrow. So it also kind of gives like an eye lift. Then the next step that we did was matching her foundation. So one thing that um, when you're transitioning with your hair color, uh, you could also see Paula is much redder in this area here. So what I did is I actually used the Hydrolux, it's a satin, our satin base, and that is a lightweight liquid foundation. Uh, Paula also is a realtor, and uh, she is in the North Florida area out of St. Augustine, and she does a lot of on-camera appearances, mm -hmm. Facebook Lives, uh, so it's important for her to have that you know, beautiful complexion and to be camera ready. So that's one of the things that we evened out her skin tone. And for those of you that are, you know, needing some tips for being on Zoom calls and, and on camera and things like that, 
having a perfected foundation, a perfected skin tone, not having, you know, oiliness and, and, you know, that redness and just it not looking really smooth is really detracting from your overall polished look. So that's why it was really important with her to do that. Now we're going to start with the eyes. So what I want to show you is how to make her eyelid appear bigger. I grabbed the color Oslo and we're using the 22 brush. This is number 22. It's a smaller brush and you want to use a smaller brush and it's a little bit more compact and I'm putting the color onto the side of the brush and it is a matte eyeshadow and what you do is you hold your eye and you really want to get this color, you want to you want to accentuate it up into the crease. And see how I'm kind of patting, I'm not just fluffing it over. I really want to get, so as you can see, open your eye for me, Paula. So see how now her eyelid looks a lot bigger than it did before, before you couldn't even see it. And I am cheating it up a little bit as well. So the next color that I'm going to use is called Malta. And this color is a very, very neutral shade. You don't want to create an eye shape with a whole lot of like beautiful colors because then all you're gonna see is the color. I'm using a different brush now. This is the number 15 and I'm tapping it on the tip. So what I do now, I'm gonna have you keep your eye open for me actually. You're gonna hold this. And now I'm going right into the top part of her bone, right? That crease bone right there. And so now what it's going to do is you don't want to go too dark with a color. What I like to do is I like to build the color. And of course, we're doing an everyday. Paula has a very natural style to her. She is uh, very much into fitness, into health. Um, she lives on the beach. So we wanna just give her a look that's going to be easy. She's super busy, but take a look at that. Now you can see that this whole, this whole side has lifted up. She has a nice big eyelid, her lower eyelid, and you can see how it looks natural. It looks like she had an eye lift. Check that out. <laughs> so this is the tip. You have to use the right tools. You don't want your brush to be too big. You're gonna to get too much color. And then you can continue to add some depth in there. Now, because of her transition from gray, we used to use a lot warmer colors on her before. So now with her transition, I'm actually gonna go into, this is more of like a slate color, and it's called Kyoto. And now I'm going to give her a little bit more depth as well. And the same technique, going in, adding some depth, and keep your eye, you can hold that eye up. And look at that, see? Now we've really opened up her eye. This one definitely looks hooded and closed. This one is just opening up. So that's gonna be a great technique for you, for those of you that also have the same issue with these eyes like me. And you just build and build. So how much payoff do you want? How much color, how much depth? Are you more of a glam girl? You can smoke it up a little bit more. All right, so we're about done with the eyes. And what we did is, as you can see, what a huge transformation there is, right? Mm -hmm. So we added the uh, Malta. And that is the one that we created her depth right there. And then I went in with a little bit of Kyoto. Now, um, I added the Kyoto on just to deepen up her eyes. And it still, as you can see, looks super natural. And then I did a little tiny bit, because she's a girl on the go. So we just did a little tiny bit of a very thin um, liquid liner and just brought that right along the lash line. You need to keep that liner super, super thin because if not, what you're doing is you're gonna close up, you know, that, that, all that work that we did on the eyelid. And then I'm taking the Kyoto once again, 
with a little tiny angle brush and I'm just giving her a little pop of liner underneath the eye. I do, I don't want to emphasize, again, it's a daytime look. So we're just going to do that super soft. And, um, and then the next step that we're going to do now is we're going to do a little bit of cheek. So since she has a very nice cheekbone right here, we're going to keep it fairly light. I'm going to use our new veil palette and this one is called golden with our angle brush and I want to just take a little bit right here and we're going to sweep that right onto the cheekbone especially if you are in camera it's going to be important to understand your facial features and how to really maximize those because if you put on foundation and you don't do any type of contouring and um, highlighting, a lot of times you can just look very flat on camera. So that's not something that we want to do. She also has a great jawline, but you can see right there how it's just very soft. And again, you can build as much as you want. You want to build a little bit more and get a little sassy and sexy with the cheekbones. It looks so pretty. And then we're going to go in. You want to go in uh, lightly. Now she, you can see this already created like a really natural highlight. So you could actually just stick with the contour and then maybe add a little bit more color. And with this, this is where I want to be careful. Because if you remember before, she had a lot of redness in this area right here. So actually bringing a color that would be a little bit more in the pink family versus in the red family. So I'm just gonna kind of show you the difference there, which before the palette that we did on her when she came in last year, I think, right? Was more golden. We gave her more of like this beachy golden vibe with her highlights and all of that. Now that she's transitioning to gray and she's gonna, her color family is going to be a little cooler. So I want to take that, uh, it's called Hollywood. So it's a beautiful color. And again, I'm just going to show you right there. I like to pat a little ex uh, excess onto my hand before I bring it onto the face. And I'm bringing that so you can smile for me right there. And it's going to, I'm adding just a little bit of color right onto the cheekbone. So we have that contour, and then I'm just using the same brush. And this look here, you can do this in 15 minutes. This is an easy, this is an easy look. So you can see, this one doesn't have anything on it, this one does. So we're creating a contour. We're not really, I, you know, she could, she could use a highlight if she wants to. Um, a lot of people love highlight, so we can, I'll show you what it's gonna look like. Of course, our contour palette right here, I'm gonna use Bell Harbor. You can also mix it with a matte, but Bell Harbor has a lighter shimmer to it. So it's okay for on camera because it's just gonna give you a little bit of glow right there. And if we want to make that pop, that's just really pretty. And we'll be back for the final look. Okay, so we have finished so far the whole look and we're just going to add a teeny bit of gloss. Uh, so I'm just going to recap for you foundation, matching your foundation and making sure, you know, we, we wanted to, um, I wanted to conceal a little bit of the redness in her skin tone because that was kind of fighting a little bit. Uh, so, and again, we're, we're, creating a little bit more of a cooler palette. She's got blues on now versus like maybe like a rust or a gold or not to say that she couldn't wear a gold, but again, you're kind of changing your whole undertone right now. So going a little bit more with those pinky colors, the grays, we did like that smoldery Kyoto that's gorgeous on her um, and just starting to add that in there. And then we're going to finish it off. I did a very light, um, our favorite pencil, which is Sable Brown. And it gives just a very nudie outline to the lips. And then of course, her favorite lip gloss, which is Leslie. 
And this is just a beautiful pink color, um, but it's, it's, it's not too Barbie. <laughs> Which there's nothing wrong with looking Barbie. Uh, but it just gives her, and again, you know, what a fresh, welcoming um, look that Paula has. And, you know, she is out in the public all the time. And so it's so important to have that polished look that you can recreate at home. So then when clients get a caller, they trust her. You look like you know what you're doing and people want to list their homes with you or they want you to sell them a home, right? Right. <laughs> so you're going to go do this tomorrow? Yes. Fantastic. Absolutely. Great. <laughs> well, I hope you've enjoyed this. And this was a transitioning. There's a lot of information in this, though, whether you have hooded eyes, um, whether you're transitioning your hair to gray. We're here at Studio Cara, so you can come visit us. You can check us out on the website. Uh, you can call us. And we also do virtual lessons, too. So if you don't live in the area and you're watching this replay and you kind of want to find out um, what we could do for you or some suggestions, then definitely give us a call. And check us out on our website at studiocara.com, caracosmetics.com. Two different things. This is our full makeup line, and it's all perfectly camera ready for you. And thank you, Paula, for being my model. Thank you. I so appreciate it. And she's a dear friend as well. So now she gets to go to uh, St. Augustine and go get some more listings, right? That's right. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Bye.